Before starting this video, I do want to give a shout out to my patrons that support the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are some great benefits for you if you want to look at the Patreon link down below. So with that out of the way, let's get into this week's video. What's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pups on PMTG. Glad to have you here. We got another Dominus spoiled and we have a really great one here. Possibly my personal favorite one here because my favorite color is red and I do really like this commander a lot because I do like burn a little bit and I think this might make burn a little bit more viable in commander. So we do have Sulfim Mayhem Dominus. So it essentially reads, if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or a permanent and opponent controls, it deals double that damage to a player or permanent instead. Also like the other Dominus cards, it gets an indestructible counter by some way by using a Phyrexian mana and maybe another additional mana, but this one has discard two cards and then you can put an indestructible counter on this creature. For me, my thoughts went a bunch of different ways. What way do I want to go with this? Do I want to go strict burn or do I want to go into a little bit of a Punisher theme? And that's the plan right here is it's going to be a total Punisher deck. Are you tired of people playing too much lands like in Simic or in just basic mono green? Or are you uh, tired of people casting free spells like in mono blue or different other colors? Here we have a great option. We're going to be punishing our opponents for doing those things. Maybe you're tired of just opponents getting too much value or maybe some men just want to watch the world burn. Also a disclaimer on this video, this deck tech will probably be very salt inducing for your opponents. So just be aware, uh, just make sure you have that rule zero, zero conversation with your opponents. See if it's okay to play this deck with them. I mean, by no means is this a CDH deck. It's definitely more of a group slug, uh, kind of slow deck, punishing your opponents just for playing magic. So let's dive in and let's talk about what we want to do in this deck. The big goal of this deck is obviously pain, mostly to your opponents though. We're going to get some pain to ourselves, but we're going to be doubling that damage to our opponents, so that'll be fine. So we're going to be punishing them for all sorts of effects. First up, we're going to be talking about land punishment. So for example, we have Zozu the Punisher and Ankh of Mishra essentially doing the same thing. So with Zozu, for example, whenever a land enters the battlefield, Zozu the Punisher will deal two damage to that land's controller. That'll include us, so we'll get two damage. But if we do have our commander out on the battlefield, that'll deal four damage to them, and we'll only have two damage, so it's definitely not a bad trade-off when you think about it. We don't have a whole lot of land in this deck compared to those Simic decks, so we're not going to be punished as much as those Simic decks that have a lot of lands entering the battlefield. So we do also have Mana Barbs and Burning Earth. Mana Barbs is a little better, but whenever a player taps a land for mana, Mana Barbs deals one damage to that player, and Burning Earth has that same ability but non-basic land instead of just a regular land like Mana Barbs. This is just great because we're really trying to punish those people who try to ramp with lands because I feel like with the way that land destruction has been frowned upon on Commander, this is the next best thing is by punishing them for having too much lands, tapping them for mana when they're casting their spells. And so these will be doubled on them again and not doubled on us. Other than lands, we do have some other alternative ways to punish our opponents for being too greedy. Rolling Vortex at the beginning of each player's upkeep. Rolling Vortex deals one damage to them. Whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast that spell, Rolling Vortex deals five damage to that player, or should I say 10 if it is your opponent's and you have your commander out. So what are some other things we could hate on? Well, we could also hate on creatures. For example, Rampaging Ferocidon was absolutely a terror in standard. However, if you're annoyed with token strategies like me sometimes, because they're honestly kind of annoying with math, but like for example, we have Scoot Swarm. This card could get out of hand really fast with the amount of Scoot Swarms entering the battlefield whenever a land enters the battlefield, but Rampaging Ferocidon will take care of your opponents when those Scoot Swarms are entering the battlefield consistently. This card is absolutely just fantastic whenever people are putting tokens on the battlefield or a lot of creatures on the battlefield like Avenger of Zendikar for example, you'll definitely be punishing them for a lot of damage when they're putting those tokens on the battlefield. Also having that ability of players can't gain life is also excellent as well. If people are playing life gain strategies as well, we want to be punishing them, not getting life. So this is definitely a great include to add to the deck. 
Also, what I do want to touch on is board wipes. Because our commander is going to be indestructible, board wipes are not going to be a big deal. So we definitely want to amplify the damage that our opponents are going to take, whether their creatures are going to die or if they're going to take damage to the face, like Roiling Earthquake, Earthquake, and Fault Line. We could deal damage to each creature with their stipulation of either not having horsemanship or without flying, but that's not really a big deal right here. But if you do have your commander out on the battlefield, we want to focus more on dealing damage to each player. We don't have to worry about damaging ourselves so much because we're going to be doubling the damage for each opponent. So say, for example, we pay into X saying 15. I know that's a lot of mana, but we could do it with a lot of rituals. Say we pay into 15. We're going to take 15 damage, but they're going to be taking 30 damage. So these are great cards to include. Also, I did have to include Blasphemous Act. Just a great board wipe in general, but instead of dealing 13 damage to each creature, you're going to be dealing 26 damage to each creature. That's just a little bit of overkill in my opinion, but... It's not about money. It's about sending a message. Also, with this damage coming around with board wipes, I think Torolf God of Fury is also a great include in here as well because it does non-combat damage when we're dealing damage with Torolf's ability. So I think this is just going to be amplifying the damage even further for our game plan. I did build this commander a long time ago, but I kind of felt like it, there was something missing in my opinion. And I feel like this new commander with Sulfim, Mayhem Dominus, may be what we need for that ultimate burn commander in my opinion. I do like Torolf. It, it's a good 99 card in here, no question about it. Also, I did want to go in a little bit of a theme of discard because we are discarding cards with our commander to get him indestructible. So we want to make sure we get some good looting abilities and also some great card selection so that we could get RP to win the game. So cards like Faithless Looting and Change of Fortune is a great option for us because we want to make sure that we're uh, discarding and then drawing. We do have some great punishing effects while we're discarding cards. I'll mention those in a little bit. But I also did want to mention Wheel of Misfortune. This is actually really great in here. Essentially, it punishes those people who try to get the card draw out of this. Uh, it's always fun and interesting to read this card again because I feel like I never know what it really does until I have to read it again. So we do have a lot of discard options in this deck, but let's punish our opponents for discarding like Brawlin Sky Shark Rider and also Glint Horn Buccaneer. Whenever you discard a card, uh, these essentially will deal damage to each opponent whenever you discard a card. Also, we do have Surly Badgesaur. This is a great card too, because whenever we're discarding one of these options, we're gonna get some uh, benefits from them, like getting counters on our Surly Badgesaur, or getting a treasure token. Or on top of that, because this is non-creature damage technically, uh, Surly Badgesaur fights up to one target creature you don't control. So this is a great option if we wanna get some board presence and also clear the board as well. I also know this technically doesn't damage people, but Psychosis Crawler will be great if we're discarding a lot of cards and then drawing cards because whenever you do draw a card, each opponent loses one life. Just because we're punishing so much people, uh, every uh, ounce of life counts for them. So even punishing them further with this will be really great in here. We do also have great ways to recover those cards that we discarded, like Containment Construct. This is great because whenever you discard a card, you may exile it from your graveyard. If you do, you may play this card the turn. So if you discard a land, you could actually put it into exile and then play it that turn. So that's a great option right there. Also, we do have Underworld Breach. I know technically it's a CDH card, but we could use it just to get something out of the graveyard if we wanted to. Also, we do have some flashback effects like Past in Flames and Recoup. This is just a great way so that we could get a sorcery card or also an instant and sorcery card from your graveyard to get flashbacks so we could reuse those abilities once again. However, let's move back to Burn because that's what the main game plan is. Let's talk about some of those options that we want to have. We do have some great all-stars in the deck too. These cards you definitely want to have on the battlefield so that we could get the most out of our commanders so that we could utilize different variations of strategies. For example, we do have Torbran, Thane of Redfell. You can kind of switch back and forth with this commander or the other commander as well if we wanted to. Torbran is an excellent card in this deck because when you're dealing double the damage with your commander, Torbran's going to allow that so he gets an additional 2 damage on top of that. So it's not going to double the extra two damage however it's just going to get an additional two damage on top of what you're doubling if that makes sense if you want to talk to me about the rules and if it's wrong let me know down below in the comments however another great card i do want to mention is the have the eternal because we're swinging so much damage to our opponents at the beginning of your post combat main phase you could add an additional red mana to your mana pool for each one life your opponents has lost this turn I can see a lot of different scenarios where you can get a lot of mana with your commander on the battlefield with Neheb. So this is just a great card to add to this list. 
And the last card I do want to mention on this list would be Heartless Hitesuku. This card definitely goes very well with our commander because it's going to double the damage Heartless Hitesuku is going to give to our opponents, which will spell out game over for them, essentially. So I definitely had to add this into the list because it's a great combo with our commander to end the game for sure. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on this brand new commander. I do think Solfa Mayhem Dominus has really great potential to be an absolute house of a bird commander in my opinion and a group slug commander as well like the rest of the dominus cycle i do believe these are probably going to be better in the 99 than commanders themselves because if you do have more color combinations these are probably going to be even more brutal to play against however knowing me i like to play less colors because it kind of gives a little bit more creativity in what you're trying to do as a deck i may consider building this myself because i do love red it's my favorite color in magic and i also love playing burn so this is probably going to be one of my favorite commanders coming out of this set in at least my opinion i will see what happens in the future but honestly the art right here is absolutely fantastic so another reason to love it however let me know down below what do you think of this commander do you feel like it's going to be a really great burn commander or do you feel like it's going to be overshadowed still by torbrand let me know down below in the comments make sure to like share and subscribe that's definitely the best way to support the channel and with that out of the way thank you for stomping by